In this video, I will show you a simple way to do a perfect head swap using Photoshop. So without wasting any time, let's begin. We shall be swapping this guy's head with this guy's head. So grab a selection tool of your choice. I will be going with the quick selection tool and make a selection of just the head. Then you can go ahead and fine tune the selection by clicking on select. Then click on select and mask or refine edge if you are using an older version. My view mode is overlay with opacity of 80%. Then you can go on and grab the refine edge brush and just brush around the edges of the selection. So we shall not spend so much time refining the selection because we shall be using a layer mask and that means anytime we can come back and fine tune our selection. So if you are done, output to new layer with mask and then click OK. So as you can see we have lost some details around the hair and to fix that, make sure the thumbnail of the layer mask is clicked and then grab the brush tool. And make sure your foreground color is white. Then you can just paint with opacity of 100 and flow of 100 to reveal some of the lost details. Double click on the hand tool to fit on screen. And then grab the move tool. And then let's drag this head and drop it on this image. And you can double click the hand tool again to fit on screen. Now before we start transforming this head to make the placement, let's right click and convert to smart object. And also rename it to head, just to avoid future confusion. And the reason why I converted this into a smart object is to avoid it from losing quality while we are transforming. Then grab the move tool and drag it in the middle, then press Ctrl plus T to transform, hold the shift key and reduce the size of the head. So you can zoom in by holding the ALT while rolling your mouse wheel. Then let's make our placement. So let's tilt it a bit. And you can reduce the opacity to see what you are doing. So as you can see the head is a bit bigger. So let's reduce the size of the head more. Yeah, I think something like this is not so bad. So as you can see, I've tried to match the necks and I've also tried to match the chin. Always avoid matching the eyes or the nose or the mouth. Remember, people's body shapes are different. Like you might find someone with a round face, the other one has a square face. So you cannot afford to match the eyes or the nose. Increase the opacity back to 100. And let's zoom in to take a look. As you can see, we need to increase the head a bit. So press Ctrl plus T and just hold the Shift key and increase it slightly. So I think this will do for now. Click on the layer mask icon and then select the brush tool. And make sure your foreground color is black. You can use this tiny icon to toggle between white and black. So make sure it's black. And then use the square brackets to increase the size of your brush. And let's take out some of these areas. Then the next step is to remove this portion of the head that is showing in the background. So Let's start by duplicating this background layer by pressing Ctrl plus J. And we are doing this so that we can have a backup copy. So hide the downer one. So grab the lasso tool and make a selection around the areas that you want to remove. Then click on Edit, Fill. Make sure Content Aware is selected. Color adaptation is checked, blending mode is normal, opacity is 100%, then click OK.
So as you can see, Photoshop has given us a very good head start and we can finish the rest using the clone stamp. So press Ctrl plus D to deselect and let's turn off the head layer and you can see, actually we don't have much to improve here. So to finish up the rest, you can just click on the new layers icon and create a new layer. Then grab the clone stamp, make sure you're sampling from all layers. Then you can just press Alt on the keyboard to sample and remove the unwanted areas. You sample and remove. So there's actually no need to waste time removing this because it's covered by the head layer. Then our next step is to match the brightness. So click on the head layer and then click on the adjustment layers icon and select hue stroke saturation. Then decrease the saturation all the way down. And the reason why I'm doing this is so that we can adjust the brightness without interference of any color. Then go ahead, click on the head layer once again and click on the adjustment layers icon and this time select curves. So since we are only matching the brightness of the head with the one of the background, so let's clip it so that it affects only the head layer. So with the help of this hand tool, you can just click on an area, let me say here on the highlights and drag it up to increase the brightness. Then you can also go ahead and create another curves adjustment layer and this time pick the hand tool and maybe target an area on the shadows and increase the brightness. So it's affecting the whole image because we forgot to clip it. So let's clip it so that it affects only the layer below. So this will do for now. Remember we're using adjustment layers and that means anytime we can come back and make changes. So let's delete this hue saturation layer. We were just using it to desaturate the image. We don't need it anymore. So as you can see, the hair has been affected so much. So click on the layer mask of the curves and make sure the foreground color is black and pick the brush tool and just brush on this area of the hair to remove the effects. And let's also do the same for the second curves. The next step is to match the colors. But if you zoom in, we can see that this skin has more texture compared to this other skin. So we have to reduce the texture on this skin to make it more smooth. So click on the head layer and then click on filter and select camera raw filter. So let's zoom in and reduce the texture by around 50%. Then click OK. So you can see now the skin is much more smooth compared to earlier. Then let's also increase the brightness a bit. So click on the curves adjustment layer that we used earlier and increase the brightness slightly. Now, before we proceed with the color matching, you need to consider one thing. If we match this guy's color with the color of this guy in the background, it would look nice, but in reality, it wouldn't look so nice because this guy is naturally dark skinned compared to the guy in the background. So matching his color with the color of the guy in the background would change his entire appearance. So the wisest thing to do is to match the skin tones of the guy in the background with this other guy instead. So that the skin tones of the guy in the background look exactly the same as the main subject. I hope you get what I mean. And the only way we can match the skin tones of the guy in the background with our main subject is by selecting the skin tones. Remember, this is a big image and we have this lady, we have the background, so we cannot just start balancing without selecting the skin. So grab the quick selection tool. We can temporarily turn off the head layer and just make a selection of the skin. 
then here also hold the alt key to subtract from the selection so when you're done making the selection you can go ahead and turn on the head layer then make sure you click on the background copy because it's what we are working on and then click on the adjustment layers icon and choose color balance so let's zoom in so that we can see clearly but first let's go back to the head layer and click on its layer mask then grab the brush tool make sure your foreground color is black and let's paint off this area Then we can go back and click on the color balance. Now when you look at the color balance adjustment layer, you can see that we have sliders for red, green, blue, cyan, magenta and yellow. And to achieve the best results, always start with the most common color. And in this case, the most common color is yellow. So under the mid-tones, let's increase the yellow. Yeah, then you can play around with the rest of the sliders until we get the perfect match. So you can play with the magenta, with the reds, the cyan. Then you can also jump to the highlights and do the same thing. Always play with the slide as well, observing the changes. Then you can also go to the shadows Now if you look at this guy's face, we can see the yellow is too much and we want to reduce some of that. So go to the head layer, click on it and then click on the adjustment layers icon. And this time select hue stroke saturation. Then you can go to the yellows and just reduce the saturation a bit. Then you can also go to the reds. And try to play around with the saturation and always remember we are using adjustment layers I repeat that again we are using adjustment layers and you can take your time if you see that there are changes that need to be made you can always come back and continue from there at this point we can now go ahead and add the finishing touches to the image like I can see the face needs some more brightness so I can go back to the curves adjustment and increase the brightness slightly. Then in case your selection in the beginning was not perfect like mine, you can just go to the head layer and double click on this thumbnail. Then it will open a new document with only that selection. So make the changes. You can click on the layer mask, grab the brush tool. Let's say you wanted to fine tune this area. So we can just paint this area with black. So we won't be spending so much time doing that right now. But if you're done fine tuning the selection, then you can close the document and save changes. So whatever changes you made to that selection will be reflected on this one. Now click on the top layer. Press Ctrl plus Shift plus Alt plus E on the keyboard to merge all these layers and put them into one single layer. So this is the layer that has our final image and we can go on adding more adjustments to make the image pop. But before doing that, let's turn this into a smart object. So right click and convert to smart object. Then click on filter and then click on camera roll filter. There are so many adjustments we can make in this window, but we shall only focus on a few. So let's start by reducing the temperature a bit to make it a bit warm. Then you can just increase the contrast. Then let's dehaze a bit and let's increase the vibrance. Then let's go to HSL adjustments. And under the saturation, we can try to increase the blues. Then we can also go to effects. And we add some grain. 
let me zoom in so that you can see the grains you can add more then click ok so this is the before and this is the after you should note that there are so many adjustments we can still add to this image but we shall stop here for now and also i'll be making another video for a more advanced head swap so don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on that notification so that you don't miss out on any other video thank you for watching and stay safe